Hello. The purpose of this video is to explore how um, inductive proof can be used to prove a variety of different um, derivative statements. Sometimes pattern emerge, patterns emerge when you take der the derivative of a function repeatedly. The more derivatives you take, um, the more outcomes uh, you get, but if you study those outcomes you can find a predictable measurable pattern. Um, in this case there was a function 1 over 2x plus 1 that if you keep differentiating over and over and over again um, the derivative nth derivative can be defined by this particular formula. So what we're trying to do is to prove that that formula actually is a valid shortcut. So if I needed the tenth derivative of 1 over 2x plus 1, Lord knows why I would need that, but if I did, I could just put 10 in for n in all of these different places, and that's going to produce the equation that represents the tenth derivative of that function. Now this is an IB question, and they asked you to use first principles first, and then they said prove by induction. It turns out using first principles is one of the things you need to do when you're trying to prove a derivative concept. You start with first principles, and then you go beyond that. So I use first principles to prove that the statement is true for n equals 1, but I have to make sure that the general form statement is actually valid. So I put in 1 for n in each of these places, and uh, it produces a nice little negative 2 over 2x plus 1 squared, which is the same thing I got using first principles. So this formula or shortcut is in fact valid for n equals 1. My next job is to assume that the statement is true when n equals k. So that the kth derivative of 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 is equal to this according to my assumption. Lastly then, I'm going to use that fact to help determine if the pattern still holds when I would use the k plus 1th derivative. So this is what the k plus 1th derivative should end up to be. Um, this is my setup. I take the k plus 1th derivative of this bad boy, which turns out it's the derivative of the kth derivative. So any of these derivative proofs that you're going to see, you'll always take your assumption and take the derivative of the assumption to get the k plus 1th term, or the next man up, if you will. So I have to substitute in what I assume to be true, the derivative of the kth derivative, is supposed to be this. And if I take the derivative of the kth derivative and I get this formula, that means I've induced proof. Here's the important thing to recognize. First thing is um, I substituted everything in, um, but what I should recognize is negative 1 to the k, 2 to the k, and k factorial, and k plus 1, for example, for, for, for that matter. These are all constants. These are like the number 2 or 7 or 5. Um, so they should be treated that way. Remember, we're differentiating with respect to x, so the only the variable x needs to be treated in function form. The rest are all fixed. So what I do is I recognize this as just a power function, so I take the 2x plus 1 and move up the power and make the exponent negative. Now to take the actual derivative, I multiply by the exponent, and then I drop the exponent by 1, and then I use the chain rule, the derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. The next thing I observe is 2 to the k times 2 to the 1 is equal to 2 to the k plus 1. So I'm cool about that. I've got negative 1 to the k, and I've got another negative 1. Where did that other negative 1 come from? I took it out of here. So you have a k plus 1 times negative 1. I just used that negative 1 over here and grouped it with that negative 1 over there. The other thing I notice is, besides the fact that negative 1 times negative 1 to the k is negative 1 to the k plus 1, is that uh, when I take k factorial and multiply by k plus 1, that's going to be k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 times k minus 2. In other words, this expression right here is just an elongated form of k plus 1 factorial. And then this, I made the exponents positive. Do a little bit of mathematical cosmetics, and we get the exact same statement that we were trying to prove up here. So, we add the extra piece. Since the statement is true for n equals 1, and the assumption of n equals k being true leads to the assumption, or to the fact that k plus 1 is true, then the statement is true for all values of n in the positive integers by the process of mathematical induction, QED. Hope this is helpful for you all. Have a nice day.